hello to everyone out there. What is rehabilitation? Rehabilitation, I like defining as redefining hope. If in other cases of disease, we can, we can define either sick or healthy or getting better or not getting better, when we come to speak about rehabilitation, it's much more complex than that. Because after a man or a woman is unfortunately wounded, whether in a car accident or from disease or in a terrorist attack like we're experiencing today, then they might not necessarily go back to the life they knew before. They might not, might not necessarily be as healthy as they were before, but then our object is to redefine what hope is for them. What is their new way of health and a living? This is a very unique field of medicine because more than any other field, it's a very multidisciplinary approach which we bring to our patients. We're not only talking about physicians and nurses, we're talking about physiotherapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists, dietitians, and of course, psychologists, psychiatrists, and social workers, because we do not differentiate between the health of the mind of the body generally, but specifically when we're talking about rehabilitation. So why are we here today? We're here today because Hadassah has the only rehabilitation department in Jerusalem, serving a population of over 1.2 million people in the, in, the, in the capital of Israel. And we're so proud that we're now going to complete the new Gandul Rehabilitation Center, where we're going to be able to quadruple the amount of patients, the number of people whom we'll be able to treat. If in routine times, before this terrible war broke out, we knew that the state of Israel and specifically the city of Jerusalem was in desperate need of more rehabilitation beds and outpatient services for rehabilitation, then now more than ever, we owe this to the people of Israel and specifically to the wounded soldiers, civilians and policemen and women whom Hadassah owes it to them to help them become healthy again and redefine hope for them. Clinical environment is a specifically important part of rehabilitation because it's not only the caring hands and hearts of our staff, it's also the surroundings and the beautiful building that the patients will be able to be in in our new center. I'm very excited and proud to introduce, to introduce Dr. Shir Shabbat Ben Yehuda. Shir is a senior resident and she excels everything she does in rehabilitation. Her, both her parents are close friends, Professor, Professor Arya and Professor Dina Ben Yehuda. Professor uh, Arya Ben Yehuda is head of internal medicine at Hadassah and Professor Dina Ben Yehuda is head of hematology. And she just finished, finished servicing as her service as dean of the medical school of Hadassah and Hebrew Youth Medical School. So, Shir, thank you for joining us. Um, I know Thanks. Shir, and, um, but we prepared to speak this evening and share with you her special experience in our department. So, Shir, please share with us, please, why you chose him to begin with to specialize in the field of rehabilitation. Okay, so um, I'm really speaking from the heart. Everyone prepared themselves so well. Um, so uh, I'm sorry if I'm a little bit uh, <laughs> um, excited. So I chose rehabilitation because I think it's a place where body meets soul, like like you said um, before that. And it's a place where the patient is prioritized where I can treat him in as part of a very big team, a multidisciplinary team. And, and this team is treating not only the body, the injured organ, but the, the whole person. And it's a very um it's it's a it's a very uh, great um profession because uh, we can uh, get the patients back to their lives, not only um to fix their heart or their leg or hand, but to come back to their homes and back to their work and family. And that's why I like it so much. Thank you. So I think it's totally understandable, you being emotional generally and specifically now. Maybe share with all of us all your connections in this special time. And it's not only your, prof your professional connection as a rehab physician, it's also your personal connection as um, a family member, 
Um, so share us, please share that with us. Thanks. Okay, so um, maybe I'll start from the beginning and I'll say that in the morning of uh, October 7th, I was with my husband and kids in the north. We were in a vacation of all of the commanders of his division, the Gaza division. And in the very st- the very beginning of this war, he, he got a call. All of the commanders that were together in this vacation got the same call that there is a war and they need to come and enlist uh, all of their uh, uh, soldiers and come straight ahead to the south. So we rushed everything, we packed everything right right then and drove very fast to the south. Um, During the drive, he got a lot of phone calls, some of them from commanders, other commanders, but one of them was from his soldier that was whispering in the phone and telling him that he's hiding in the bushes and waiting for someone to save him after he was part of the party in Reim and they were attacked by terrorists. And later that day, my husband did this exact thing. Um, He he got uh, to uh, the South and started fighting with his uh, company and as a commander of this company, uh, he um, deal, dealt with a lot uh, from uh, fighting terrorists face to face to evacuating bodies, uh, sometimes under under fire. And uh, the last uh, two days, uh, even got inside Gaza with his company. Um, so uh, this is my husband. Uh, I'm very proud of him, but I'm very worried about him. Uh, my sister, uh, my own sister, she is so brave. She's the commander of the um, Karakal Battalion. Uh, this is a combination of men and women in the same battalion that are fighting together. And she also fought face to face with terrorists and uh, during this war. Uh, my cousin died at the very morning of the October 7th. He was a soldier in uh, Golani and he died in uh, Nachal Oz. Uh, it was his last um, Shabbat in the in the, his uh, serve in the army. He was supposed to be released after two days and he was very, very brave. He fought and treated his uh, soldiers, and uh, at the end, he, he, he was so wounded, he, he couldn't stand. But um, I think um, I think it's very hard, and it's ve- we, we are very worried uh, all the time, and we're not sleeping a lot at night, during the night. But I think we have a lot of resilience, and not only me, but the kibbutz I'm living in and my family. And we have to to keep our heads straight, to be there for our kids, to be there for our patients. So during the night shifts, when I'm treating patients that were there and fought there, some sometimes there were just civilians that that were uh, slaughtered or saw her, their families uh, slaughtered or bombed. And they are sharing their pain, their stories, their physical pain, their emotional pain. And sometimes I'm thinking during the, <laughs> during this time of my family, but I'm, I'm keeping my, my uh, professional <laughs> uh, duty and I'm, I have the right. I have the. It's it's a very great right to to treat uh, the the wounded and the injured. Um. So this is where where we are. I think we have a lot of uh, resilience. Um. My grandmother that uh, she's not with us. Uh, I think uh, maybe it's <laughs> it's a good thing. She she doesn't uh, have to be now. To see everything that's happening, but she always said she's a holo- she was a Holocaust survivor, and she al- always said that people will always try to hunt us and to break us, but we will never break. We will always survive. So I believe that. 
So you're saying that actually treating the wounded civilians and soldiers actually gives you strength in these difficult times and that you feel that it's a privilege. Why do you think, do you feel that the that the new centre that hopefully will be able to open in the near future, do you feel that that might have a more significant impact on your capability to help your patients? I'm very sure of that. I I'm, I want to thank everyone that's here that that um, wants to listen and to hear us. Um, and I'm I'm very sure that the patients that uh, are coming every day more and more, they will need a healing environment. And the healing environment is exactly what you said earlier. It's a place where uh, there are also surroundings. There is not it, it's not in a very closed. A building. It's not uh, in an old building uh, where they sleep sometimes five and six patients in the same room. And they need uh, windows. They need to see um, um, more people like them, but in a very healing environment. It's very important in the rehabilitation process. We believe it very much. And um, <laughs> we need to promote it as soon as possible. Shil, thank you for everything you do, specifically for this discussion. And I really send a lot of strength and love to all of your family out there. Thank you. Thank you very much.